Today I'm going to be presenting our paper, Preventing Kernel Hacks with Hacks. This is a joint effort between me at Purdue University and my colleagues at MIT Lincoln Laboratory and EPFL. Hacks enforces a least privilege policy on monolithic software, which is a widely used security technique that has been proven difficult to apply in system software. As motivation for this work, we analyzed the last five years of high severity CVEs issued for the Linux kernel and determined what mitigation, if any, would have prevented the exploit. We found that most of the CVEs could have been mitigated had a least privilege policy been imposed. Memory safety was a close second mitigation. And interestingly, there was only a limited intersection of CVEs that would have been prevented had either mitigation been in place. But given its larger impact, we therefore decided to tackle the privilege separation problem. And the design we came up with is the HACS system. HACS, which stands for Hardware Assisted Kernel Compartmentalization, is an enforcement mechanism for any arbitrary compartmentalization policy. HACS runs on bare metal without the need of any virtualization or security monitoring layer. To enforce the compartments, HACS uses two new ARM extensions Pointer Authentication Code, or PAC, and Memory Tagging Extensions, or MTE. PAC allows a user to specify a context with which a pointer will be signed, and the signature is stored in the upper 16 bits of the pointer. The original pointer can be retrieved if PAC is presented with a signed pointer in the context with which it was signed. MTE allows a region of virtual memory to be tagged or colored with one of 16 colors and allows the retrieval of the color data via the pointer. The Linux kernel can be broadly divided into two parts, the core kernel and kernel modules. The core kernel is the image that gets loaded by the bootloader when starting the computer. However, in an effort to reduce the size of the core kernel image, some functionality is separated from the core kernel and is dynamically loaded when the functionality is needed. These dynamically loaded objects are collectively called kernel modules. They are often used for device drivers, file systems, or protocol implementations. When a kernel module gets loaded by the kernel, however, it becomes indistinguishable from the core kernel code. And in monolithic software like the Linux kernel, has full access to all kernel data. Kernel module code is often less vetted than core kernel code. But a, but a kernel module bug is just as severe as a core kernel bug. Hack targets kernel modules for compartmentalization. To illustrate the type of bug hack mitigates, consider this code, which is based on CVE 2016-4997. This code, which is part of a packer, packet filtering mechanism, runs during error cleanup and can be used to decrement arbitrary kernel data. One of the members of struct entry is used to store an offset value and if that offset value is lower than offset max, the offset value is used to compute a pointer to an integer. That pointer is then given to a callback function, and the underlying integer is decremented by one after the callback function returns. The bug is caused by a lack of a lower bound check in the first line. The offset member can be user controlled, and the lack of a lower bound check means that the pointer can point to arbitrary code kernel data by making the offset a large negative number. An attacker can be made root by repeatedly calling this function and making i point to their user ID, for instance. Hack works by reading a compartmentalization policy provided by the developer that combines code and data into a structure we call a click. A set of clicks is further bundled into another structural structure called a compartment. Each click is assigned a color unique to the compartment, but not globally unique. Additionally, the compartmentalization policy defines an access control policy for each click. In this case, the yellow click can access yellow, green, and black data, while green can only access its own data. If we repeat this for all the rest of the code that we want to compartmentalize, we can end up in a layout like this. The two-level partitioning separating clicks and compartments allows hacks to safely reuse colors and optimizes for data locality for commonly used data. Finally, the compartmentalization policy dictates valid control flow transfers between compartments.
In this case, the IPv6 compartment can transfer to the Bluetooth and packet filtering compartments, but cannot transfer control to the ext4 compartment. Hacks enforces data ownership using packet MTE. All data must belong to a compartment. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, all data must belong to the currently executing compartment and must obey the uh, the data access policy defined by the uh, click in the compartment. When control flow needs to exit the compartment, data ownership must be transferred to the target click before control can flow to that click. Data ownership transfer involves a recoloring of the uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, data ownership involves recoloring of the data using MTE and a pointer re-signing using PAC, using the target click color and compartment as the PAC context. While the target is executing, the data access policy in the target compartment is followed. When the target function returns, the data is recolored to its original color and re-signed to restore data ownership to the original click. Hacks enforces the data access policy within a compartment and performs compartment transfers by instrumenting code using an LLVM pass. In our example from earlier, Hacks first checks that I is a valid pointer. This check involves retrieving the color of the integer pointed to by I, checking the, val the color is valid as per the access control policy, and finally, checking that the pointer is signed appropriately using PAC. Next, Hex adds a check to ensure that the function pointer is in the set of valid compartment transitions. The transfer process, which is written by the user, actually calls the color and signing functions to transfer the ownership of I to the yellow Bluetooth compartment and back to the green IPv6 compartment when the function returns. The CVE that inspired this code would have been mitigated by the data check on I because the pointer signature wouldn't have been valid. Like I said, Hacks uses both MTE and PAC to check that data validity is accessible. Checking data with Hacks starts with a signed pointer shown here with the upper 16 bits storing the signature. Hacks first gets the color of the data and that color is compared with the click access control list. The result of the access control check is combined with the compartment identifier into a PAC context. The context and the signed pointer are then given to the PAC authentication instruction, which results in a valid unsigned pointer that could be used for access. If the data color is not accessible per the access control list, or the data was signed with a different compartment identifier, the PAC authentication will result in an invalid pointer. To evaluate, to evaluate hacks, we wanted to measure the overhead induced by compartmentalization and whether users would notice when they are using a compartmentalized system or not. To that end, we compartmentalized the Linux IPv6 kernel module in one of the Linux packet filtering mechanisms. We measured the overhead induced when transferring various sized files using Apache Bench where the IPv6 module was running alone and with the packet filtering module running alongside. All experiments were done using a Raspberry Pi 4, pictured here, and as no hardware exists that actually implements PAC and MTE, the instructions were replaced with instruction analogs. The details can be found in our paper. This chart plots the request per second and the transfer rate the compartmentalized IPv6 module achieved normalized to an uncompartmentalized module. The overhead ranges from 2% to 20%. The highest overhead comes when transferring the smallest file. This is because establishing a TCP, over, TCP connection involves a lot of hack checks, but once the session is established, transferring the file is relatively simple. Therefore, for small files, the TCP connection time dominates the full file transfer time while for larger files, that time is amortized. Repeating the same experiment with both IPv6 and packet filtering modules active, we measure a linear overhead increase. However, we claim that this is a worst case scenario as both modules operate sequentially on the same data. To determine if a user would notice the compartmentalized IPv6 module, we selected the top 50 Alexa websites that broadcast an IPv6 address and measured the time difference from the uncompartmentalized kernel to render each page. The compartmentalized ker uh, kernel module took 1.19 seconds slower on average to render the web pages.
However, the standard deviation was 4.34 seconds. Given that the standard deviation is more than two times the average, we conclude that users will not notice a difference browsing the internet using the compartmentalized module. The table lists the five websites with the highest and lowest standard deviations. Notice that investing.com is a significant outlier in both low time delta and standard deviation. For that reason, we do not include it in our average low time measurement. In summary, Hacks utilizes a novel two-level enforcement mechanism for compartmentalizing, for compartmentalizing kernel code without virtualization. Enforcing a least privileged policy in system software traditionally has been difficult to implement. However, combining two new hardware, hardware features, PAC and MTE, makes enforcement of compartments a feasible task. Hack imposes low overhead, yet provides strong protection for data and control flow. We have open sourced our implementation and it is available at the listed URL. Thank you.